Hi everyone and welcome back to a new video. For those of you who are new here, my name is Mare and I'm a first year pharmacy resident. And for those of you who are back, it's good to see you again. In today's video, I'll be going over all things NAPLEX and CPJE related. So if you know what those are, fantastic. And if you don't, that's totally okay. You are in the right place and I'll be going over all of the details, what they are, how they fit into the grand scheme of things to become a licensed pharmacist, how I went about studying for them, what resources and tools I used, and my approach and how it all worked out for me. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So first things first, what exactly are the NAPLEX and the CPJE? So the NAPLEX is the clinical exam that is taken by all pharmacy school graduates in order to become a licensed pharmacist. This is the clinical exam. It is the same exam in all 50 states. Uh, so no matter where you take the NAPLEX, it will be the same exam. It may or may not vary from day to day. Um, but on that note, it is offered multiple times throughout the month, which is great. So you can take it whenever you feel most ready. Something to consider is that it is not part of your pharmacy school curriculum, but it is through a third party. So you do have to apply to the Board of Pharmacy, at least in California for your intern license, as well as your pharmacist license in order to get an ATT, which is a code to be able to schedule and sit for your exam. So that is all a separate topic. There is a lot of nuance, especially in the state of California. But once you are able to submit all of your documentation and get that code, you can sign up for your exam. The CPJE, on the other hand, is the law exam. If you are from another state, this is called the MPJE. And so most states in the US have the MPJE that is tailored to their specific state's laws. The CPJE is a fun exam because it is not only pertaining to California law in pharmacy, but also with clinical practice thrown in there. So the CPJE is written by both lawyers as well as pharmacists. So we get a nice mix of the clinical, which is all that the NAPLEX is about. We get the law, which is what predominantly the CPJE should be about. And then of course we have the lovely brand generic that everyone is just a huge fan of, right? So at the end of the day, the CPJE is definitely one of those exams. It's offered not super frequently, uh, up to two times a month, if at all during a month. Uh, they can fill up quite fast and the exam itself is much shorter compared to the NAPLEX. The NAPLEX is about six, six and a half hours with a little over 200 questions, five choices for each with case questions as well as standalone questions. While the CPJE is about uh, 90 minutes, 90 minutes, and you also have 90 questions. Um, it was definitely a much quicker exam. I actually think I have the time wrong. I'll be able to place it on the screen once I figure out exactly how long it was, but it was definitely 90 questions with four options for each question, which is kind of nice because you can eliminate two and then hopefully have a 50-50 shot. So that is the CPJE. And in general, just to give you an idea, or at least what my thought process was, and I think it's echoed by many, is that if you study for the NAPLEX, you'll be set up for the clinical portion of your exams. And then in that way, if you take the CPJE about a week or so after, you can focus in that difference of times on the law on the, and brand generic aspects. So again, the NAPLEX, purely clinical, and then the CPJE is clinical in addition to the law and brand generic. So uh, all things to take into consideration. And so that's kind of an overview of what the two exams are. Of course, you need to pass both in order to become a licensed pharmacist. So uh, for myself, I was aiming for the middle of June to take the NAPLEX and early July for the CPJE. And spoiler alert, the way it worked out was that I did take the NAPLEX about the end of June-ish. Actually, I guess it was the middle of June. And about a week later, so the end of June, I took the CPJE. So it ended up working out for me that I could take the NAPLEX first and the CPJE but I know so many others who took it vice versa and it worked out just as well for them. So in case you're wondering kind of what the general approach is or what the thought is, again, totally up to you, but that's what worked for me. So not only do we now have these exams, we have to think about how do we prepare for them? So for myself personally, I used RX Prep, which was a study guide that was provided through my institution. So the cost was covered, but I thought it was a fantastic tool and it was a one-stop shop. So RX Prep is made up of two parts. There is the physical book as well as the online portion. So the book is fantastic. It comes as this giant monstrosity that you can go to FedEx and get cut up into multiple sections, which is what I did at the beginning of Appy Year, but you can do it at any point. And then the online portion is great because it includes quizzes, um, practice tests, as well as some of the resources for creating your own study schedule. 
And what you'll notice inside the book of the RX Prep is that there are multiple chapters. And something great that they do online is that they take all of those chapters and they assign them a color. And so based on that color, it lets you know how long they think it'll take you to review the material. So green indicates it'll take about an hour. Yellow means it'll take anywhere from two to four hours. And red meaning it'll take over four hours in order to review that chapter. And this was really great because when I started getting into the nitty gritty of my studying, I was able to figure out when to place what chapters based on how long I thought they'd take. So I guess now to touch upon that, in order to create my own schedule, I went online and I found an Excel template that um, you can find basically anywhere, but I'll include the one that I use below. And from there, I started to input all of the different chapters that I needed to do. To preface this, I was able to study in four weeks. I dedicated six out of seven days a week to studying. It was about eight hour days, not, consist not continuously, but throughout the course of a day. And from there, I was able to accomplish that and be able to sit for the exam and feel pretty okay uh, by the end of four weeks. But as a disclaimer, I did spend the last appy block I had, so from match day until about early May, reviewing the shorter chapters. So something I urge you to do now, if you are in your last appy or if you are finished now and wanting to take your exam, uh, is and you want to start off kind of a little bit slower and really get into the swing of things, is to start going over those green chapters. And these are the ones that are going to be a lot easier to digest. They're shorter chapters and this will really help you out in the long run because it'll be one less chapter for you to review when it comes down to your hardcore studying right before you take that exam. And I think this really helped me a lot. I would do it during my lunch breaks because I knew I wouldn't do it after my appies. Um, and it definitely helped me when I started to do that one full month of studying to be like, I know the small chapter's done, out of the way, quickly review it, take a couple notes if I needed to, to reference back. But really it wasn't much of a concern to me when it came down to test time. The next thing I suggest doing, but prior to really that core month of studying that I did, that I did not do, was studying your brand generics. There is never a good time to start. It will always feel like a giant mountain you have to climb, but at some point you just have to do it and, or at least get started. And so I have left the Quizlet that my co-resident Vera created linked below. It's about 700, 700 ish of the top brand generics. So definitely something to take a look at. Uh, I for me personally at least there were definitely like 25 of them I want to say that I just like could not memorize there for the life of me it doesn't matter how many times I looked at them I would never know but 600 and something wasn't bad so at the end of the day as long as you retain something it'll be that much more than had you never looked at it at all so now getting into the one big month of studying I started at the end of May, so after graduation, after the graduation trip I took with friends, and I went all the way up until my test day. Something to keep in mind is that I did not know what day I was going to take my test when I started studying. I had a rough date of prior to the start of my residency, since that was a goal of mine, and it ended up working out that way, but I did not get my ATT, that code to test, until about a week and a half before I took the exam, so I had already been studying for about two and a half weeks at that point. So I urge you to study before you get your ATT so that you are ready to take the exam um, as soon as possible or when you feel comfortable. Um, but again, if you can get it out of the way, that's fantastic if you have a deadline. And if you don't have one, then there you go. You can choose whenever you want to take it. So for me personally, I started end of May and I went right up to the test date for the NAPLEX. And like I mentioned to you earlier, and as I've shared, I just used that schedule. Again, I did say eight hours a day, but it wasn't a continuous eight hours. I broke it up with hanging out with my friends, my family, doing things. I think that's important after you finish pharmacy school to really take some time to still enjoy um, whatever you have going on in life. It shouldn't stop just because you have the NAPLEX and the CPJE, but it definitely was time intensive. I tried to leave one day of a week for a rest day, and that often did not happen because I would have a lot of spillage over and that's okay, do whatever feels right to you. If there's some days you feel like you can do more, great. If there's some days that you feel like you can't, great, push it to the next day. So for me personally, as far as the day-to-day -day goes, how I would start was that I would open up Rx Prep to the chapter that I had decided for that day. And I would take notes in a Google Doc on all of the important points that I felt I would wanna be able to reference or go back to. And this I would do to keep a running tally throughout the course of the day. At the end of the day, I would take the quizzes pertaining to the sections I had read just to see if I was able to take away what the practice prep was trying for me to understand. 
And then on the next day, what I would do is I would review the Google Docs section, the notes that I had written for the day prior. And so this allowed me every single day to at least go back one day and review that material. And I think this was super helpful because I don't know if anybody else is like this, but randomly I would start to remember these quirky things that I was like, oh, do I need to know or do I remember what the statin conversions are? And that was the type of thing that I would keep in my notes so that I could quickly reference them. I could just control F. And I think that is the most important part is being able to control F and look for those key buzzwords. So every time something would pop in my head and I would quiz myself on it and I needed to know the answer immediately, I feel like that Google Doc was able to give me that peace of mind on top of the answer, which was helpful. And then on the day that I was then studying the next thing, I would just go through my cycle again. I would do the chapters I had set out to do, take the quizzes, and then the next morning, go back and review the Google Doc notes I had taken for the day prior. As far as studying for the CPJE in particular goes, so that was how I studied for the clinical aspect of the, well, I guess all of the NAPLEX. But then, like I mentioned, I had about a week until I took the CPJE. So between the NAPLEX and the CPJE, I focused predominantly on the law part. Rx Prep also has a CPJE booklet and it underlines all of the important points. And that is exactly what I read in order to be able to study for the CPJE part. I took the CPJE at the end of my first week of my PGY1 residency and so we had long days and I was trying to cram in as much information as possible while studying grand generics and still sleeping at night and so there was definitely a lot of information to go over but really focusing on those underlying parts again having that all synthesized into a Google Doc and being able to do brand generics and then also I think the biggest thing is being able to reference back to the um, clinical portions that I had written notes for, I think really set me up for success because a week is not a lot of time, but I also don't think you need too, too much time between the two, uh, considering just how, uh, how much less information there is for the law portion compared to the clinical. And the fact that you ideally, hopefully, if you're not me, uh, started doing brand generics much earlier on. So hopefully that can all come together. And that will go ahead and wrap up how I went about studying for the NAPLEX and the CPJE. Again, they are two very different exams, but yet very similar at the same time, sharing that clinical component. Um, I guess as far as it goes with scheduling them for the NAPLEX, it is offered more frequently, but I did end up having to schedule at a test center about three hours away. But I wasn't too concerned because I had heard as you get closer, seats start to open up closer to your, where you may be. And that was the case. So instead of having to drive three hours away, I was able to find a spot about 15 minutes away. So keep checking, um, but definitely book it if you feel like you're interested in taking it at a certain date or time. And then for the CPJE, of course, I would check the schedule online if you just type in CPJE dates for whatever year. It'll pop up with when those dates are and be mindful of the fact that when you take it, uh, it's again, not offered frequently, but in the event that you do have to retake it, you have to wait 45 days until you can take the exam again. So just something to consider because you just want to keep your options open. And so I hope that this video was helpful to you all. And if you have any questions, of course, please leave them down below. If you have anything you want me to answer more immediately or anything like that, you can always reach me on Instagram at mayor.ferk or at my podcast Instagram at life on the farm podcast. And again, uh, please let me know if you have any questions, um, anything that you want me to address, and I'd be happy to do so. And I hope to see you all at the next video, whenever that may be. And good luck with your studying. You all do great. Bye.